shalom, peace, and grace. I bring you greetings from Charlottesville, Virginia, where white supremacists, racists, anti-Semites chanted blood and soil, a Nazi slogan, while marching around a statue of the most famous plagiarist of John Locke, Thomas Jefferson, the Jefferson who claimed radical equality was for all, but sat atop Sally's body, as well as Monticello's hill, in both cases, depriving bodies and souls of dignity. And the so-called alt-right martyred Heather Heyer. White supremacists don't wear white hoods anymore. They're mainstreamed. They wear khakis and white polos, and they are in the White House. But we, we, Muslims, Christians, Jews, people of no faith, but part of a multi-faith movement, were made for America's shit. I bring you greetings from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, where I grew up under the tutelage of my grandfather at New Bethel Baptist Church, a church on the black side of town because redlining is part of America's history of carving out plantations and reservations. I bring you greetings from that church where not two summers ago, Coonville, I hope you don't know that term, but if you don't, you should look it up. It's a reference to our history of racism and Jim Crowism, and it was sprayed on the side of the church that my grandfather built with his retirement money because he felt God, Allah, was calling him to build a church in this underserved side of town. I bring you greetings from that place because it is part of the heritage that led me to Chicago, Illinois, where after studying for my PhD in race, religion, and politics, I went to Wheaton College. So I bring you greetings from Chicago, where at Wheaton College I was the first black female tenured in the history of this stop on the Underground Railroad founded in 1860 often called the Evangelical Harvard, and where when I declared my intention in a viral Facebook post to don a hijab, maybe you recognize me now, <laughs> in solidarity with Muslim women, <laughs> instead of the act being seen as the act of Advent solidarity, it's a Christian, um, time of celebration of the incarnation of Jesus Christ as we believe. My intention to show my religious devotion during a high holy Christian season in solidarity with my Muslim sisters in the wake of San Bernardino and Jerry Falwell Jr., a Christian at Liberty University, saying from the perch of his chapel pulpit, if people had in their back pocket what he had in his, they could end those Muslims before they end us. Two Christians inciting violence in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. So the college and I parted ways, lawyers know what that means, because I had the temerity to say that Muslims, my brothers and sisters, and I, worship the same God, not to mention our Jewish brothers and sisters, but they didn't have a problem with that part. But beyond greetings, I bring you grief. I am here to remind you that the president who blamed the victims of the Tree of Life synagogue massacre, they should have had more guns, y'all. The same president who enacted the Muslim ban, the same president who condemns caravans, caravans of the likes that our religious forebears all traveled in at times to escape government and religious persecution. That president is in the White House. That president doesn't care that his own daughter and grandchildren practice the Jewish faith. How many more trees of life, tree of life massacres must there be? 
before we wake up. Grief upon grief, sorrow upon sorrow. Their blood cries out from the ground. Do you hear it? I am here to remind you that Muslims in the Congress and in state houses ain't enough. Rest assured, they're coming for those bodies. I can assure you that the Jim Crow shenanigans that have intensified since the election of Barack Obama will evolve to keep Muslim bodies off the ballot in 2020. Get ready. But we were made for that shit too. Impact is doing the work of advancing America toward justice. Are you? They have heeded the call of the Quran. They have embodied the challenges of our times. So I have a challenge for you. Going to dinners, sponsoring tables, inviting your friends, writing checks. This is not my first dinner in the Uma, y'all. <laughs> Making good food, inviting your neighbors, Attending synagogue with your friends, it's not enough. It's not enough. Friends, Trump is in the White House, and as a black gospel hymn says, I ain't got time to die. We can't be sick and tired of being sick and tired. I ain't got time for self-care, but I do have time to stand with impact for all they do on behalf of religious freedom, national security, and to combat the hatred and evil. Something is rotten in Denmark. <laughs> and impact is rooting it out by advancing America toward justice. Are you with them? Will you do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with Allah and the universe? Some of us, in embodying sacrificial solidarity, expect that we will die in the fight. Like MLK said, I may not get there with you, but I see the promised land, and I'm here to ask you, are you willing to go with impact toward the promised land and do your part for the future, not just of this country? but for the future of humankind. So I'll leave you with my favorite surah. O oh, mankind, indeed, we have created you from male and female and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Indeed, Allah is knowing and acquainted. Inshallah, we will all be together in this fight for justice and for freedom and stand with impact. Thank you.